Ooh. Porcupine right up there. Yep. It's right there. I just stopped because I seen a oh, it was a red squirrel or a chipmunk running through here. So I was kind of waiting and then just scoping the trees out. I looked up and just caught the backside of him. Alright, we're gonna get him. And yes, we're gonna eat him. I didn't think I'd find a porcupine this quick. Uh, it's the first day. Today's <clears throat> I got here last night. I got camp set up. Uh, it usually takes me a few days to find one, but I just happened to see this guy. Uh, like I said, I was chasing after a little something, a little red squirrel, uh, uh, chipmunk or something. I can't remember what it was. And I decided to look in the trees around me, and I look up at a tree right behind me, and it, there he was. He was way up there and he was tucked in. It was hard to get a good shot on him. Uh, I had to make two shots. It's, nothing's perfect every time, but I got him. Uh, if you've ever shot a porcupine, I promise you eat it. It is, between porcupine and beaver, I don't know what one's my favorite. They're North America's two largest rodents. It's hard to explain. Like when I give it to people, like porcupine for the first time, and they, I, I don't tell them, they're like, oh man, it's good, what is this? It's like, porcupine <laughs> what like you like it don't pretend like you don't like it no you just ate it you said this is good you like it I, I'm telling you there's so many people go out and shoot these things because their their state tells them it's a nuisance it's a pest it's a it's a invasive species or destroying the, the, the woods no they're not I, I mean I can look around if there's not one spot I can see where this guy's chewed on anything I guarantee you the insects and the mushrooms out there are doing more damage to these woods, yes mushrooms, mushrooms kill a lot of trees, than these porcupines ever could. There's beaver do more damage to the woods than these guys do. And I'll show you, I come across a tree, it was a live tree cut down by a beaver, a big one, and these guys aren't cutting trees down. So I get, you know, people with their bird dogs, they go out, they, uh, they feel like they could get their dogs well they shoot them out of a tree 30 feet up like my dog can't climb a tree I don't know how yours can so I mean that thing's not hurting them up there but they shoot them they let them lay in the ground there's there's two issues with that one it's an edible species it's very good so if if, if someone told you a black Angus cow was uh was an invasive species would you walk out in a farm field shoot one and just let it lay no you wouldn't because it tastes good if you try porcupine, you'll love it. So that's my one issue, just letting something edible lay there. Two, animals out here are opportunistic hunters. So are dogs. You know, you're worried about your dog coming upon a porcupine, but you shoot one and you let it lay. So now someone else's dog comes running by or anything, uh, like coyote, uh, uh, fox, raccoon, you know, mink. Just, you get what I'm saying, any like predator type animal, they're gonna come up on it and it's a free meal when they go face first into it now they got quills all over the place so you're leaving it for another animal to suffer I don't care if you like predator animals or not I mean nothing should suffer I get it if they suffer while they're trying to eat this while it's trying to protect themselves but it's dead it's it's not gonna hurt them purposely but they're gonna hurt themselves going in for a meal cook porcupine I'm telling you it's good uh, slow cook it 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 breaks down the collagen and the muscles it's it's edible very edible so i'm going to take this back i'm going to make a called a pulled pork sandwich uh pulled porky pine i guess but i got a few ideas i got some coleslaw and some funyuns i'm gonna put on top too so that should be pretty good and i'm going to show you how to skin it too people get worried about skinning it i'm telling you it's it's so easy the way i do it 
and I have yet to get poked by a quill from skinning a porcupine. I'm gonna get this guy, we'll, we'll get him back, we're gonna get him cleaned up, I'll take care of the, the hide, I'm gonna burn it. I'm not gonna bury it, I'm not gonna just throw it on the ground, I don't want anything to get a hold of it, so. Get this guy in a bag, get him in a backpack, and get him back, and we're gonna get him cooking. Here's the thing about uh, skinning a porcupine, is you have to tie all four of their feet off to two different trees. I got 550 cord here. There you go. 550 cord. This stuff works the best. You can use anything. You could use shoestrings if you had them, if you're in a survival situation. You could use just regular rope. Anything that'll tie somewhat tight and will hold around the, the feet, um, that'll hold them up. So what I do is I take, I don't know if I'll get this, I go around the rope and then I tie a knot back on the cell, back on itself. I don't know, so I mean essentially it's a slip knot, but it'll, you can see it'll start to tighten up, but just to uh, basically make it stronger so it doesn't slip off is I'll tie it on itself again so this knot's tight it won't come loose right there that knot's tight but it still allows it to cinch down and it'll it'll hold real tight and you can take just open it back up then you go put it around the feet Just be careful with uh, around the feet because they have tiny little quills somewhere. Yeah, I can start to see them right in this area. I mean, around their actual foot, there's no quills. There's really there's none underneath. It's mainly on their tail, their backside, uh, and the back of their head. But take your 550 cord or whatever you have, put it around, and get down below the ankle. Like like this is the whole bottom of the foot right there. You want to get past that to where it has an ankle or a knuckle, a joint to hold on to, and cinch it down. You can just put them up in the tree. What I like to do is get, uh, figure out, just hold it up in the tree about the height that you want to skin them at. Take one side, hold it off with your hand, that way you know how high up to tie the rope. Get that side tied off and then come over to the other side. Tie that off and then you got your two bottom feet that you gotta get. There you go. It's perfect. It, all the quills are, it's not gonna roll around. Like if you're on the ground trying to do this, it's not gonna flop around and you know, take it or have a chance of get kind of sticking you. It's all held in one spot. So if you get stuck with a quill, it's, it's your fault. Porcupine do have a little bit of a body odor. Don't let that discourage you from eating them. I promise. They taste way better than they smell and look. All right, I'm gonna get this started. What I like to do is pick a pick a leg, start there. Again, don't just dive into this because there are quills around. Don't cut your cord, just cut around. Get one leg started that way you can uh, skin all the way up and start peeling the, the hide off. Come over to the other side, do the same thing. Cut all the way around. Come on the inside of the, the leg, the underside. Cut straight up. And straight across. And, oop. Poke that one. Don't do that. <laughs> it's all right though. It's in the bucket. And from here, just start peeling the, the hide off. These damn Havilon knives are so sharp. And then without trying to poke them again, go up the underside, cut all the way up top. Once I get up top, I take and go right up the leg. And as you go up, you can kind of 
start to peel the hide off. And up here, go around this leg. Now be careful right up here because this is where you start to get into the quills on the back side of the head and the neck. Obviously you're skinning this like this to try to prevent yourself from getting stuck. So you got to do your part and be careful. Go on the other side. Just keep working your knife in and around and give you something to hold on to. Now when you grab the underneath, remember that doesn't have the quill so you can hold on to this. But you want to do most of your holding on the inside because remember the quills are on the outside. So I get up to the top, I'm going to make another cut right up the underside of the front leg and then go around. Once you get up towards the head, you can uh, get everything removed up to that point. I use a pair of scissors to go right through the neck. Tends to work pretty darn good. Cuts right through the bone. I shouldn't say scissors, I say more meat shears than anything. And then the, the weight of the the hide will just start to pull itself off. When you grab, make sure you grab the inside. Don't don't grab the outside. Get all the way down to the bottom. I know you can't really see it right there, but I got the scissors and I'm just cutting through the tail. There you go. One skin porcupine. Now the rest, pretty simple. It's just like skinning anything else. I mean, just get two fingers up into the, the intestinal cavity, work your way up. I'm gonna keep the liver, we're gonna eat that. I like to cut the diaphragm out, makes it a lot easier to work. I'm trying to find the heart. Heart's uh, right there it is, I can feel it. Uh, it's the best cut of meat on an animal. I take and once you get the intestines start to cut free, just keep working it down the, the backbone, whatever that connective tissue is that holds it all together. Get down to the bottom, you got all the all the intestines, gets down to its little butthole. Just take your knife, and get inside, just cut around through the pelvic bone and it'll all release. There you go. All the intestines. There you have it. Like I said, it's not it's not hard. It's a little more time consuming than anything. 550 cord makes it the easiest. If you only have rope, I mean, it, it, you have what you have, you gotta use it. I put a bucket underneath the porcupine when I skin them just to catch the guts and stuff. Uh, there are black bear out here, not that I'm scared of them, but I'm trying to do as little as possible to attract them to my area. It's bad enough I'm going to be cooking this thing. It's going to smell pretty good. Camp's about 100 yards that way. I'm trying not to bring them here like, oh, hey, you know, there's food over there too, and then come rip through my tent or something. I'd hate to have to shoot one. I like to shoot one just while I'm out hunting, not because my dumb ass left a bunch of food or gut pile close to camp. Use 550 cord, tie them off, you got a bucket put underneath, everything falls right into it. It's so simple. Just remember, grab on the inside of the hide, don't grab the outside, and remember the tail section, um, 
the basically their back and then up around their head is where the most of the quills are i'm gonna get this down take it back i'm gonna take it to the river over here i'm gonna wash it i'm gonna cut the cut the feet off i'm gonna toss them out let the fish eat them i'm gonna burn the the hide and one thing you'll you might hear or read that porcupine you can eat them raw because they're diet and they're they just eat trees or whatever i I've always heard that I would never eat one raw. I mean, obviously, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you can't cook it and you're starving after a week, then whatever. But when I cut this open, I nicked the sack. I looked down and I noticed the stuff in the, the bucket was moving. He actually had worms in his intestine. I don't mean you're going to get them from eating the meat, but they had worms. I'm not going to eat something raw that is a carrier of a parasite. That, that's asinine to me. I have plenty of opportunity to cook it over there, but I have the, the liver, I have the heart. I'm going to skewer those. I'm going to maybe cook liver and onions. I'm going to try it. I don't like liver, but I feel bad just throwing it out if I have a chance of eating it. I'm going to get this down, wash it, get it back to the camp, get it cooking up. Get this cooked up. I'm going to cook it in the can cooker real quick for I don't know how long it's going to take. I shouldn't say real quick. I've never actually used this to cook, like with the pressure system in it, I guess. Uh, I've always just kind of used it to make soups and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, got a whole onion, lay it along the bottom, break it all up inside. What that does, I don't have potatoes. Um, potatoes would be better, but what it does is it gives the kind of a, like a barrier against the heat from the fire and the meat. You don't want the meat to sit right on the bottom of the pan. You want it to be somewhat suspended. I got that put in there. I got a whole bunch of seasonings. Got minced garlic. I like garlic so you can never have too much. A little Worcestershire sauce. And all we're trying to do is cook this in some flavor, not uh, not really making stew or anything, which I'll probably end up eating this anyway. Putting some of the, the meat back in it and eating it as a stew, but uh, I got some Italian seasoning. Ground salt. Go a little generous on the salt too because it, it tends to dilute in the water. Fresh ground pepper. Frank's Red Hot and put that shit on everything they say. Garlic powder. And onion powder. Now, I'll take the porcupine. I got all the feet off it. Ooh, I see some fur. Get all the hairs off. I get one last chance before they're cooked into it. Take that, put it down and in. I got about four cups of water in there. I'm going to add a little more and I'm going to put it on the fire.
cooking. All right, that took about an hour and a half, uh, maybe two hours of cooking the can cooker. I'm actually really surprised how fast that worked. Use butter. Huh, that's good. You can see all the meat just pulls off the bones. What you want to do is just go through, put all the good stuff in one pile. Oh, look at that, the rib bones just, you know, these two just pulled right out. Another rib bone, that one just pulled out. Put them in a bad pile and throw them out, but I mean, I got a fire right here, might as well use them, or use it. I'm gonna pull all the fat out. I mean, there's really no reason to have the fat in there. Like a big old chunk here. I'm gonna go through, take all the all the bones out and all the meat and separate it. And you wanna take and feel because there'll be tiny, tiny little bones in there. You don't wanna be chewing down on something to hit that, you break a tooth. Especially around the spine. I mean, the, the meat's just falling right off. It's slow cooking it or Pressure cooking it, I guess, is the way to go. Like all that stuff, I don't need none of that. So I'm gonna get this, uh, get this all separated, pulled apart, and then we're gonna toast the buns, put some butter on it, and get the sandwich built. I'm hungry. I haven't ate anything. I ate a, I ate a muffin for breakfast, and that was about that was. It's probably 5:30 or 6 now. It was probably 7:30 in the morning. I ate. That's all I've all I've had to eat. So this sandwich is going to be extra good. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. I'm so excited. I'm going to take a little bit of just sweet baby rays. I don't know. It, to me, this is the best mass-produced uh, barbecue sauce. Put a good amount on. Not too much, but enough to cover everything. Mix that all in real good. You don't want to overpower the porcupine. I mean, obviously you want to taste it. You still, I mean, be like eating a piece of bread or toast with no butter on it. Like, who, who does that? So get the barbecue sauce on there. should be done oh yeah oh ah. hot now take a little bit of our porcupine set that off to the side got some monster cheese I love monster cheese it's so good. This is the first time I ever put coleslaw on one of these sandwiches, but I was at the grocery store buying all this stuff, and I said, eh, it's going to hurt. I like coleslaw. Take our butter. Let that soak into the bun. store-bought coleslaw I mean it's it's really finely chopped if you can make it at home it'd be ten times better because you can like, kind of coarse chop it a little bit put some of this on put her tops on not going to be bad. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> this is going to be so good. Oh my god. I don't know if this fact that I'm starving or that this is just 
that good. I'm making a mess. Dude, what a way to end the night. Oh my god. This is... This is good. I hope if at any point in time throughout this whole thing, if I convince you to at least try it, I hope that worked. I mean, that's my whole goal here. I mean, there's so many different ways you can cook it. Look up recipes. Stew's a big one. A lot of people do that. But you can make pulled pork sandwiches. That's probably my favorite. I don't know. Just get creative. I mean, I'm out here. I say in the middle of nowhere. I'm far enough to where if I get hurt, I'm screwed. I'm not far enough to where I can hear noises in the, the background. I brought what I have and... I made a pulled pork sandwich. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. You'll enjoy it. I'm gonna finish this. I got a, I got a lot to do yet. I still gotta clean up camp, get this, all this food somehow cleaned up. I don't want to leave food laying around and track the bear in. But I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna go to bed, and then tomorrow. Hopefully, I can get uh, a couple squirrel, chipmunk, red squirrel, a grouse. I kicked up quite a few grouse. can't believe how many grouse I kicked up. They're making a comeback, it seems like, which is good. All of which are edible. I'm going to eat every last one of them, whatever I can get. I got some crayfish traps I got to go set, so I'm going to get them in the water. Hopefully, I can make like a backwoods uh, lobster roll. I got an idea on that. It's going to be really good if I can get them. I'm going to finish this. And then uh, I will see you next time.